time for another Coffee with Kilroy, or what I like to call beverage in a book. My beverage, well, it's coffee. And I hope you're enjoying something along with me. The book, Mag 23, Guadalcanal, A Solitaire Air War Game. This is from Historic Wings and Thomas Van Hare, who was kind enough to send me this copy. So I want to thank him for that. Uh, you need to check uh, check him out. Check out his books. Um, he is uh, he's doing some very interesting stuff, and that's why I wanted to uh, share this with you, so you can see if it interests you. Let me get some more copy here, and let's get to looking at this proper. Now this is his second in the series. His first one was. Tally Ho, a uh, solitaire air war game. Uh, this dealt with uh, World War uh, II in the uh, European theater, and then this one is uh, the Pacific theater. So let's take a look at this, get the back here. And I just want to start off, I mean, these things are, are thick. I mean, these are game books, but there's there's a whole lot of game in these books, uh, just to let you know that. Um, here's the back. You're going to see an example of some of the play materials. Complexity is 5 out of 10. Age range is 10 plus. Number of players is solitaire. Time to play is 15 to 60 minutes. Okay. Reading the back uh, blurb, Mag 23 Guadalcanal is a solitaire air war game in a narrative style. Tactical, operational, and strategic decision making are required. The action comes together in your logbook where you can capture the stories and events of a seven and a half weeks deployment at H Henderson Field. Will your F4F Wildcat defeat Japanese, Japan's G4M Betty bombers and its mini aces in their A6M zeros? Will you stop the Tokyo Express? Designed by Thomas Van Hare, this is the second in the series of book-based war games. It features fast-paced play and action and unfolds in the skies over Iron Bottom Sound and Savo. Each game day is its own game, and together the days become an entire campaign as you lead your pilots into combat and face the jungle, disease, naval bombardment, fuel shortages, and Japan's fine, finest aces. So right there, that's a, it tells us a lot about this. I mean, number one, it's a, it's a game it's in a book. It is solitaire. It is uh, kind of narrative-based. So you're, you're looking at kind of the uh, long legacy of B-17 Queen of the Skies, which was a solitaire air game. That kind of gave a narrative feel to it. The, the, the game itself... Uh, was a lot of charts, but then the narrative is what made the game, and I think that's what uh, Thomas is trying to go for here is to develop kind of a narrative, you know. The and, and solitaire kind of needs that, otherwise you're just rolling dice and flipping charts. Where the narrative and the story that you're telling in your own mind or the theater of the mind is what uh, what makes these things uh, makes these games interesting, in my opinion. So let's look at the front here. The future is in your dice. Got, got that trademark. So uh, here is uh, what's available. Is Tally Ho on Amazon. That's where I got that. Uh, this one uh, came from Amazon as well uh, via Thomas. Uh, in development and planning, got a lot of stuff here. Uh, drone combat in Ukraine, air battle over Malta. Finland stands against Soviets. Wow, he's got some Vietnam. Korea more, Yom Kippur, uh, World War II stuff. So he's really working on some stuff here. So this this should be uh, this should be interesting. So if you like this, there's there there might be more in your future here. Um, here's this dedication here. Take a look at that. Recommendations, and he's got some uh, some uh, military recommendations here. A major general. Marine and a colonel here, so quite quite a bit of uh, got some support there. Here's your contents. Uh, you're going to have how to play, game components, sequence of play, uh, your pre-flight gameplay, flight ops, post-flight, combat resolution, anti-aircraft, dogfights, bombing, 
bailout, hits resolution, SAR missions, and using game counters. So, uh, and this does have a little bit of D DIY, do it yourself, because you've got to pull the stuff uh, uh, to, to be, for me to better enjoy or get, uh, get the full uh, full effect of this experience, you know, making the counters and using those is a good way to do that. Here's some gameplay tables. As you can see from these game rules, I mean, this is an air combat game. So it's all based on, uh, you know, manning air combat missions. Supplemental history here as well. And that's something that he goes above and beyond is adding a lot of context and historical background. Which is something that, um, I mean, I play these games they're games, so I play them for the enjoyment, but I also play them for the history, to learn a little bit about history and kind of have a tactile feel for history. So uh, having this context always um, helps me out as well. And then there's you can download a lot of like the counters and some of the charts and stuff at Board Game Geek, uh, and he puts a link there. So if you want to really uh, spruce up the, your game, you can do that here. Uh, the, the text here looks like it's in a uh, uh, double column here. He's got some color, but that's mainly for captions. We'll see if he's got examples in here. But uh, here's your introduction. Here's your how to play. And they're kind of separated in paragraphs, but they're not necessarily numbered. So, I mean, you have some of these subsections, but then you have a, a narrative out underneath there. And these are covering all the different areas that... Uh, that were outlined in the table of contents. You have some notes here highlighted. This looks like it's historical in that regard. So maybe these gray things are, are historical notes and, and I enjoy those uh, reading. You know, when I'm reading the rules the first time, I generally skip over those. Uh, but then I'll, when I when I go back and have to refer to certain things, that's when I usually pick uh, up the historical context. Here's your game components. And here you have some color um, uh, images for like the air icons, land icons, and sea icons. As I said, I mean, th these. Uh, this is a game in a book, and this is a, a, a relatively involved game in a book. This isn't a one of the, uh, if you've been following my channel, I've followed a lot of game books over the last year and a half or so. And uh, some are almost roll and write, some are, are um, you know, are, are full bore games that you basically have to DIY, um, but th this one is is kind of more on that end where you it's to really get the full effect you got to uh, pull stuff out of here. But everything's in here, but it's a matter of how pretty you want to make it look to uh, to play it. And here's some examples here of some of the counters and the uh, references on that. You got your pre-flight, flight ops, and post-flight. This is your, part of your sequence of play here. As you can see, there's a lot of rules in here. So this is not your, uh, I mean, for a, a war gamer or a uh, grognarg, this is, you know, nothing nothing new, right? But there's, there's quite a bit in here. Plus, I mean, you're also having to develop the rules for the AI because this is a solitaire game. So uh, it has that all built in here. And then you so you get your pre, uh, during, and post lot looks like gameplay here. And and as I said, each one of these missions is like a day, I believe, and then um, or each day is a mission, something like that. But then you can string these together and do it in a campaign. So it looks like you're trying to get into a little bit of a RPG, a role playing game ish type game. Here you got victory point awarded and accrued. So you can keep track over time uh, what how you're doing and uh, and I don't know if there's pilot development in this I can't recall if there was in Tally Ho I'm believing he's using somewhat of the same system but um, so you you can get a little bit of a feel I mean not only do you get the narrative which is a little bit like an RPG but if you have like these campaigns or legacy or or continuing careers then you get a little bit of a uh, RPG feel as well. Here's anti-aircraft. Here's an example of a dogfight. So you've got examples in here. This is a relatively long example. Then you got an example of a complex dogfight. So you got simple dogfight, complex dogfight, 
and here's clarification dogfight rules. So quite a few, you know, a couple pages there on just dogfights. Here's bombing. Of course, that's uh, important as well. And strafing, bailout and injuries. You got uh, search and rescue missions here. So if you had to bail out, you'd probably have to have a search and rec rescue mission. Here's about using gameplay counters and how to, uh, a little bit of instruction there and then starting gameplay. Then you got your mission tables here and quite a few mission tables. So this is something that you probably wanna print out from Board Game Geek or you can make copies out of this. Otherwise you're gonna be flipping through the books a lot. I find that in these uh, war game books that I usually try to make a copy of some of the key charts or if some companies actually might provide uh, the charts in a separate uh, offering like Minden Game does that on some of their games. So you can have the key charts off to the side uh, instead of having to flip through the book all the time. But you've got your pre-flight, you've got um, you know all the different uh, coast watchers and marine scouts and for the different air and land or sea missions, radar, You've got a lot of different charts here. It starts with phase one, and you go all the way up to phase 15 over here, phase 16, phase 17 over here. And this is your end of day pilot MIA status. And you got history of week. So it gives you a little bit of background here. So these are the specific mission tables. Okay, I think I got this now. So this is mission tables for week one. So you're doing a week at a time. So these are the mission tables for week one, and here's like a history of week one, right? And then you're gonna have uh, mission tables for week two, and it's gonna have some different mission tables, the weather and what have you, and you go through these 17 phases to go through uh, the game, it looks like here. And then you've got a history of week two. And it, that covers a period uh, from August to September, uh, to September 3rd. And then week three, week four. I mean, there's a lot in here, folks. Week six, seven, and this is, uh, what is this? This is week seven. Did I skip a page? Because here's week, uh, oh, this is the final days. Okay, this is final days. And then you got supporting mission tables. Now these are the ones you might, if they're supporting all the other missions, this is, might be something you might want to print out or, or uh, copy. There's quite a few tables and charts in here. Then you've got your campaign tracker sheet, uh, sheet optional use. But this, this kind of kind of helped to your narrative as well, kind of keeping track of missions assigned, victory points, losses, um, you know, stuff like that. So you, you can kind of build, keep your, Track your your career and your in your narrative on this. Um, so here are phases, combat charts, counters, and background. So this is kind of the gameplay components that you definitely might want to either print out from Board Gate Geek or copy from here, or because uh, I don't think you want to use these in the book. I think it'd be very cumbersome. So so you've got uh, daily operational phases here, pre, flight, and post. You've got your uh, air combat operations, no intercept, uh, CAP, close range, and long range. You've got uh, land combat operations, undefended critical target with air cover, do or die. And you've got your sea combat. So you've got your different operations, transports, escorted, uh, cruiser task force, battleship task force. So you've got these different operations. Here's your flight phases your different kind of operation that you're going on, whether it is uh, air, land, or sea. Then you got some counters here. Here's the enemies, because you are playing the US in this, and here's some of your counters. So this is something that you want to print out from uh, uh, BGG or make a copy of this. Um, there might be a way to get the file from BGG that might be better, because this looks like it is uh, I wonder if these are two double-sided. I'd have to check up on that. They look look like they might print out 
double-sided or they're just because they look like they're kind of the same oh no they're different on the side like there's two there sorry for the shake in there and there's one there so these might be double-sided uh, so that you might want to print those out there here it looks like some land type stuff you've got some troops and artillery and anti-aircraft um, artillery looks like you've got some hits for bombing you've got some statuses here it looks like aces then you got some ships here. Looks interesting. Those are big too. Then you then you're getting into your uh, kind of your map, so to speak here. Air combat operations. You've got sea combat operations. Let's take a look at this here. Land combat operations. So this is kind of a maybe just kind of more of a holding box maybe because uh, they're, they're just like like they're historical type maps, but there's no places to put stuff on there. Then you got your pilot roster and deployment calendar. So you can really get into the detail here of, I guess, keeping track of your different pilots and whether they're on or off or what happens with stuff like that. And there's several of those charts. Uh, and there's it's a whole calendar. So it's keeping track of different stuff here of, of, of when they are available and when they're not available. So that, again, that's more for the you know, bookkeeping and the, the narrative and the kind of the career type stuff. Sorry, I'm, I'm, under, I'm under attack right now. Um, here's some more charts that, to log stuff here. Uh, all your different, uh, I have a lot of different stuff here to keep track of between, uh, let's see, you got Lost Today, Newly Arrived, SBD Aviation, uh, Lost Today, Newly Arrived. Oh, so you've got all these different, keeping track of this stuff. Fuel at start, cap, expended, all kinds of different stuff here. So this is, I'd have to go back and see what some of the mission results are and see how much of this is important. But this is all a log. And then you've got your aircraft performance chart. So this is definitely telling you what, you know, I think this information's on the counter, but this is a place to kind of look at the chart to figure out what you, where they stand. And this is getting into the historical stuff, which I really like. So he's gonna have the aircraft performance and, you know, basically your specs for each of these different uh, planes that are in, that are used in this game. So that's kind of cool. You got a little article here, which is better, the Wildcat or the Zero. And um, you've got a glossary here. This is the radar glossary and detecting um, aircraft. And he's got a lot of historical stuff here. And this is the part that, you know, um, I like. Uh, and uh, I usually spend time going through the rules a few times and then uh, figuring out how to play. And then I might pick up like those historical notes in the rules. But then at some point I want to take a step back and I just want to read this stuff. Um, before I get too deep into the game because I want to give myself the context, right, of what I'm going to be doing in the game. And this is all this is all context. This is all history here. And there's quite a bit in here. I mean, uh, you got to give it to uh, Thomas that uh, he does put a lot of, of history into his games. And here are design notes here talking about you know, like uh, keep the emotional impact of the narr of narrative style games, you know, what his intent here is. Gameplay would be uh, broad scale, make it interesting, fast playing and fun, personalize it, make the game maps and game contents, game counters optional. That's interesting. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily play with this stuff, but again, you know, we're, we're war gamers. We're, we're used to our counters. And so uh, even though this might be optional, there's, um, it's probably not much optional for most of us. You know, it's something we're going to want to develop at some point. Here's a little bit about the author. Uh, Thomas Van Heer is an American author living in Sweden. He is an artist and game designer, a former search and rescue pilot, and former senior White House and Pentagon official. He publishes a video channel on YouTube and runs an e-zine about aviation history called Historic Wings, which celebrates 25th anniversary of publication on October 14th, 2022. In late to November 2022, Historic Wings issued his first series of book-based solitaire air war uh, board games. 
So here's all his links and stuff. So yeah, check him out. Uh, he, he's, I've, I've corresponded with him just through, um, like over the internet, you know, Facebook messenger, stuff like that. And he seems very knowledgeable, very interesting. So, so there you have it. Uh, that is mag 23 Guadalcanal, a solitaire air war game, which is second in the series. Uh, Tally Ho was first. Mag 23 is second. I do see some differences uh, between these. I mean, there's a lot of history, so that's a similarity here. But there are some differences between these uh, two games uh, that I noticed uh, just going through. I mean, because this was, you know, a hex encounter type game and uh, had kind of some different charts. So this definitely played uh, differently or is, is it goes for a different effect than what's in here. This seems to be... Uh, seems to me to be a little bit more uh, operational, maybe, uh, and dealing with the, the the campaign, and you're dealing with uh, missions at a week at a time. So a little bit different uh, feel and scale on this one, uh, how it plays. But I'm I'm anxious to get into this one and see what we have. I mean, this one. Uh, you definitely had to have like the counters and stuff for this game because of their, you know, the hex board and, and the counters that go on the board, so to speak. This one, maybe not. Maybe that is a little bit more optional in this one, as he was saying in, back in his notes. But this is just something I got to get into a little bit more. So anyway, uh, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this game or on Tally Ho uh, or this, you know, anything that's on your mind with respect to war uh, board games uh, or I guess should say board game books or war game books and um, and solitaire games in this space. Uh, do these uh, interest you? Do these look like something you might want to try to play? And if not, why? You know, I think all those comments are fair game and something that people would like to read. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and sharing uh, a cup of coffee with me or whatever you're drinking. And the best way I know that you uh, stop by is leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking on, again, uh, this book, this uh, genre, uh, or anything you want to talk about as long as it's civil. Anyway, take care. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.